Hi everyone! So today I thought I would address a topic that I get asked a lot of questions about and that is why I choose to house my tortoise on her own. So this has been a topic of much debate on my channel and I often get called mean or cruel for making the decision to house her alone and I constantly have people telling me that she'll be happier with a friend. So I thought I would discuss why I've made this decision and also share some of the research that I've done on the topic of companionship in tortoises. So I'll start off with tortoises in the wild and in the wild they're primarily solitary animals which means that generally they live on their own and they can live very happily on their own. Now people we seek companionship and because we're happier with friends we tend to presume that all animals will be too. So we often hear about how animals need friends, animals like guinea pigs are herd animals, Dogs live in packs and even fish live in shoals or schools but this doesn't necessarily mean that tortoises need company. So some species of tortoise do live together in the wild like redfoots and pancake tortoises so they can benefit from having a friend but generally as a rule tortoises are solitary especially when it comes to tortoise of the testudo genus which are often ones that are kept as household pets. So this is the Mediterranean species of tortoise, which includes Russian tortoises, which are also called horse fields, Herman tortoises, Greek tortoises, which are called spurthide quite often, um, Egyptian tortoises, and also the marginated tortoises. So these species, as a rule, are solitary. In the wild they wander over miles and miles and miles and only occasionally come across another tortoise. So when they do come across a tortoise they'll fight and or possibly mate and then either one will chase the other one away or they'll just wander apart. They don't seek companionship and hang out with other tortoises like we would do. So this doesn't mean that they can't live in pairs or groups, but it does mean that if you're considering housing them in pairs or groups, there are a lot of considerations that you need to look into. And it's far from cruel to choose them to choose to house them separately. So many people do choose to house tortoises together and there are a lot of considerations. Um, buying two and just hoping that they get on doesn't always work out. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it really doesn't, and you do need to think really carefully about the gender, the species of the tortoise, whether you've got space for a second setup if the pairing doesn't work out. Um, some species are more aggressive and territorial than others. Horse fields, for example, can be very aggressive towards each other. Um, partially, this depends on species, but also the individual personality of the tortoise. So like us, they've all got different personalities, and some of them are bound to be friendlier than others. Um, some people have also said that this is partly due to the way that they were raised. Um, they say that tortoises raised with other tortoises are more likely to live happily together than those raised as solitary animals or those that are taken from the wild. So when you're looking into getting your tortoise friend, it's really, really important to know that tortoises housed together must be of the same species and the same sp subspecies. So if you've got a Herman tortoise, you would need to get them a friend that was a Herman tortoise. So I thought I would touch on pairings a little bit. Of course, I'm not an expert when it comes to pairings and groups of tortoises because I only have one. So I haven't had any experience with this. It's literally only what I've researched. But I thought I'd put together a couple of points because I know a lot of people do come to me and say, what do I do when I want to get my tortoise a friend? So like I said, not all tortoises will get on and especially with testudo species, they can be dominant, they can be territorial, they can compete for food, basking spots, space, they can bite, bully and ram each other which can result in a huge amount of stress, injuries and sometimes death. So pairings do really need to be thoroughly thought out and some pairings are said to work better than others. So one male and one female together is generally a really bad idea um, because there can be a lot a lot of mating um, I mean some people have said that it's up to 20 times a day um, sometimes it can even be enough to kill the female 
So in captivity, the female can't get away from the male like they'd be able to in the wild, which can result in their vent becoming really chafed and torn from the constant mating, which can take a really long time to heal and can cause infections. There can also be, I mean, circling, biting, ramming, again, bullying. And these behaviours would be considered normal courting behaviours in the wild, but because, again, they're in a confined space, it can become dangerous because they can't get away from each other. So generally, one male and one female are not a good pairing. They're only really kept together for breeding purposes. And then, even then, they breed and then they're separated, generally. Um, two or more males, again, can be very, very territorial and fight for dominance. And you must always be prepared to separate them if necessary and house them separately because it can be quite a dangerous combination. Of course, there's going to be exceptions, but constant fighting can put a lot of stress on your tortoise and can result again in some really nasty injuries. So females, two females, as with most animals, will generally get on better than a pair or a group of males, but saying that even females can be violent and territorial with each other and also against other males, there's no guarantee. Um, again, your tortoise must be the same species and subspecies as each other, but overall, pairs are quite risky. So this is why many people choose to house their tortoises either alone or in groups. So if you really wanted more than one tortoise and you had a lot of space, time and also financial um, security as well, because they're quite expensive animals, um, you can consider a group of three or more. So with a group, aggression is dispersed between the members of the group, which means that one single tortoise is less likely to be a target of all the aggression. So it means bullying is less likely, um, so is serious injury and stress. So if you do decide to keep a pair or a group, you must have a good size enclosure and a variety of places to hide. Um, it may also help to have different levels and obstacles so they're not always in each other's sight. If they can constantly see each other, they're going to be bugging each other. So I find through my research that all tortoise pairings or groups are going to be tricky, but a group of females seems to be the most likely to work out. Um, if you're set on more than one tortoise, avoid ma one male and one female and two males, and even two females is quite risky because there's always going to be a dominant tortoise with the Testudo species. So to keep the fighting to a minimum, if you have a group of three or more females or one male to three or more females, then hopefully fingers crossed the dominance behaviours will be spread out among them but this does mean that you will need a lot of space and there's still no guarantees that it's all going to work out. So the next thing is quarantine which is another consideration if you bring a new tortoise home. They'll need to be quarantined, the tortoise trust recommends for at least six months so this allows them to settle into their new home and for any potential illnesses to incubate and show symptoms which means that you can be sure that they're healthy and they're not going to endanger your current tortoise or tortoises. So this means keeping them separate at all times, a separate enclosure, separate food dishes, washing your hands in between handling each tortoise and just keeping everything completely separate. And then when it is time to introduce them you'll need to be prepared to separate them at any minute because they can do a lot of damage very quickly. Um, a lot of owners that I've seen on tortoise forums don't recommend leaving them alone together at all for the first few weeks until you're sure that they're settled in and they're not going to be causing a problem to each other. So a big thing when you're choosing to house your tortoise in groups is the enclosure. So the absolute minimum enclosure size for a young small species of tortoise is 2 foot by 4 foot. Um, for every tortoise that you add into the equation you'll you'll need at least that amount of space again. The smaller the space, the less they can get away from each other, and so the more likely they are to fight to get under each other's feet. Bigger is always better if you're trying to make them successfully be friends. Um, you need a good size enclosure with a variety of places to hide, um, different levels, obstacles, so they can't see each other all the time and you know they can get away from each other. So just to sum it up, um, tortoises don't need a friend and I'm not being cruel for choosing to house my tortoise on her own. I'm making a conscious decision based on my research and what I think's best for her 
and instead of bringing another tortoise home I'd rather spend that money on Sheldon and there's always ways I can improve her care I can upgrade her lighting give her a bigger enclosure an outdoor enclosure and I can save for future vet bills because let's face it if she's going to be around hopefully for the next 80 years there's going to be a few vet bills so I'd rather focus on her rather than bringing another animal home um, I'm not condemning the people who choose to house their tortoises in pairs or groups but I'm just basically explaining why I've chosen to keep Sheldon on her own and urging people to sort of be careful and do their research before rushing out to get a friend because I know that we put that human emotion on them of loneliness and we think that they might be lonely and and some of them really do benefit from having a friend but it is there's a lot of considerations and it's something that needs to really be thought out so I hope this helped and I hope it didn't go on too long there's quite a lot of information to go over and it's quite complex but I hope this helped and I hope you enjoyed it I'll see you guys soon bye bye